Uh, tool materials. There's basically four types of materials that you can use to make a cutting tool. Uh, at the bottom end, and what we basically started out with is steels. Uh, specifically, high speed steels are pretty much all anybody uses anymore. There's lots of different types M2, M7, M35, M42. There's so many M numbers that uh, it'll bog your mind. Those are the low end, really, nowadays, because uh, they still have a, a purpose. They're still, they, they're still useful sometimes, but the tool life of high-speed steel tools is gonna be a lot less than uh, a solid carbide, which is pretty normal. Uh, Solid carbide is, is, is the largest part of, of what most people use, it's the largest part of what we do. Um, you've used tungsten carbide with a, with a binder and you can create really tough, um, hard tools that'll last a long time. Uh, straddling the middle there is the carbide tip tools, so which is with a high speed steel body and then you put carbide on the edges to make it stronger. Uh, they're cheaper because you don't have to use as much carbide. Uh, but they have geometry limitations which make them not quite as good uh, in a lot of applications. And then way up on the side over here we have PCD diamond which is a tautology uh, <laughs> because PCD stands for polycrystalline diamond so it's saying polycrystalline diamond diamond. Uh, they have some of the same uh, limitations as carbide tip tools actually. Um, mainly being that you can only do flat edges, you can't do curves. Uh, but PCD has the highest hardness of any of the materials that you can make. Diamond is pretty much the hardest that we can get right now. Um, so it has uh, application in long wearing, um, long wearing uh, uh, applications uh, where you, you can get good results on the part and you also don't want to change that tool out very often or in very abrasive materials. So here's a hardness comparison. Um, this is in Rockwell, Rockwell C. Uh, and you can see PCD is like 120 Rockwell C. Uh, solid carbide is more in the 90s. High speed steel, you can heat treat it to really anywhere you want, but uh, generally the harder M42s, M35s are gonna be around 62 to 65 Rockwell. Uh, carbide tip tools, I'm not sure why they're there. They, the carbide can be up around uh, 90s, but uh, I guess they're taking an average of what the, the steel body is. The pros of high-speed steel. It's lower cost. It's a lot cheaper. You can buy 100 high-speed steel tools and just throw them away as they wear out and it, nobody's gonna care that you're throwing away a $3 bin. Uh, the bodies are actually tougher, so in hand routing applications, when you're, when you've just got a guy out there with an air router, or uh, it's a really old spindle and it wobbles, you can see it move. If you put your hand on the spindle and it's going like this, uh, then they are, are good because the steel will bend a little bit. It won't just break. Um, it has steel. You can get steel sharper because of the lattice structure of the steel. You can make a sharp, a, a finer edge on it than you can with the granular structure of solid carbide. So actually in some applications you can get a better finish with a high speed steel tool because it's sharper, uh, but then it's gonna dull quickly. So you're gonna get it, there's a trade off there as well. Um, they don't bind as much in warm thermoformed plastic parts. That's saying it works better in really soft plastics. Uh, you can do basically any geometry you want, so we can put whatever rake and clearance on the here we want. We can do helixes, we can make them spiral up, we can make them spiral down, we can do whatever we want. Uh, and you can get really long cutting edge lengths, again, because that steel will bend a little bit. It'll give. Um, some of the cons are, uh, there's less rigidity the steel will give, so you can get a little bit of vibration. Uh, sometimes you can get a little bit of chatter on your tool part on your um, workpiece part. Shorter tool life, uh, because it's not as hard, no, not as abrasive resistant, and generally slower feed rates than a lot of the other materials that you could use. And there you go. There we go. Carbide tip tool, lower cost, 
than solid carbide. Um, you get the tough body of the high-speed steel, uh, but the longer life of the carbide. Um, pretty much where people use carbide tip tools should be in hand routing of abrasive materials. Um, or roughing on older machines. Uh, those would be good applications for where you might want to use carbide tip. Because if you don't care about your tool change, because if you're doing hand operations, you really don't care about your tool change, right? You, you, the guy's just going to go, okay, i got to put another one in. Uh, so it's good for abrasive materials where if you used high speed steel, you'd just be changing them so often it would be ridiculous. Some of the cons are again that reduced rigidity because you're using a steel body, slower feed rates, limited geometry is available. So it's got to be straight. You have to have a straight edge. You might be able to put a little bit of a tilt on it to get an up or a down, but not too much because then you run out of places to put that carbide. You have to have a solid backing for it. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why long cutting edge lengths are not usually available in smaller diameters because you have to have backing and the longer that carbide gets, the harder it is to braise it into the body uh, and have it be stable. And generally poor plunging ability in carbide tip tools because you have the carbide tips sticking out over the steel body and then the steel body, you, have to, you can try and put some geometry on that before you braise the tips in, put a little gashing. So it'll plunge a little bit, but it's never going to be as good as having an actual carbide point, which you could get from using solid carbide tools. Solid carbide, you're generally going to get the best rigidity out of solid carbide, which equates to the best finish because it's not vibrating, it's not moving at all. Uh, you can go much higher feed rates than with high speed steel, which reduces cycle time. You again, just like with high speed steel tools, we can do anything we want with solid carbide. Uh, it's almost as if anything you can dream of. Not quite that, but uh, with you know the simulation software and everything that we have now, and the different types of wheels that you can use, um, pocketing tools, and there's so specialty stuff that you can do, that you can do, you know, completely weird stuff. Your main limitations in solid carbide is the length of cut, which is going to be the same on everything, because the uh, carbide is more brittle. So it's much harder, more abrasive resistant, but it doesn't, it won't, if it bends at all, it breaks. It's not uh, a, a, so good in older machines. One of the cons is increased breakage in not well maintained machinery. So if your spindle's running out and you're using a carbide tool uh, and you try and cut something a little too hard, it's just gonna snap. Um, generally, uh, on, multi, on multiple flute solid carbide tools, you can reshocker them multiple times. You're going to get pretty much 10 times the tool life of a, a high speed steel tool. Uh, and you can put whatever type of point you want on a carbide drill so you can plunge. Uh, if you're drilling holes, you should use a drill, but uh, a router bit will plunge, a solid carbide router bit will plunge much better than any other type of uh, tool you're, trying, you're going to try and get. The cons are higher initial cost than high speed steel. It's, there's, they're not super expensive. Most Businesses look at it as just the cost of doing business now because carbide is so uh, generic, but they are higher than a high-speed steel, and you will find some people who are like, "Oh, well, I can get this tool for seven dollars. Why is yours forty? Well, because it's gonna, it's five times as good." Um, aluminum and plastic tooling is frequently not resharpenable. That's O flutes. You can't resharpen O flutes. Single flute tools. Do uh, you lose too much of the? cutting geometry when you reach out them. So PCD, really long life in abrasive materials. Um, it's the advantage of PCD, is long tool life. Uh, the con is the high initial cost. Uh, you're gonna, if, if you tell someone our best tool is this PCD compression tool, it's gonna last you a really long time, they'll say great, and then you say it's $500 and they're gonna say, oh, that's really bad. So you have to, the PCD is for people who know what they're going to be doing and who have the time to set it up without breaking it. So, because you don't want to, to experiment a lot with PCD, right? You wanna find out what is the right thing to do and do that, make sure you're not losing anything anywhere. Because when you break a $500 tool, it, people aren't, aren't happy. 
Um, PC is usually, usually used in more aerospace industries. Um, composite graphite, woven fiber, fiberglass, uh, polyester, reinforced uh, fiberglass, the, the things that are really abrasive and people uh, don't want to keep changing carbide tools. Uh, also, because when carbide tools wear, they get duller, that's what wear is, sometimes you get bad finish when it starts to wear. So if they, don't, if they need to get through a whole part before they stop, then PCD could be the answer for that. Um, PCD is also actually very common in um, the automotive industry for aluminums. If they're drilling in aluminum, very popular is PCD, especially on large you know, when you're running tens of thousands of pieces, because you can run a couple of ten, a couple thousand of those without changing the drill out. Um, the con, another con of PCD is poor plastic and soft wood geometry. That's the same con that you're going to have with a uh, carbide tip tool, since it's straight geometry. It's not going to have a really good point on it. It's, it's generally not the best choice for plastic and soft woods, um, simply because. The carbide's going to be just fine and it's going to last so long anyway that you don't need to worry about using PCD. And again, typically you can't plunge with them. 